So I'm speaking with a composer, Ellen uh, Mudeman, uh, whose work has quickly brought her into the spotlight of the composing industry. Uh, her, her work on notable films like the drama Skin, the documentary Hair, and the reality series The Only Way is Essex showcased her great versatility as a composer. Uh, Ellen also worked with John Powell on his scores for Happy Feet 2 and also worked with him on Ice Age Continental Drift. Her most recent score is to the drama Bliss, about a young girl searching for her unknown father. Uh, Ellen, thank you so much for uh, speaking today. Thank you very much for having me on your show. <laughs> so I'd love to start, you know, I guess from the beginning. I'd love to ask uh, what made you want to get involved with uh, music overall and what was the spark that pushed you towards wanting to become a film composer? Uh, well, it's quite funny because I've always loved music since I was really small and I used to love animation as well. And I saw that uh, Hanna-Barbera but on the end of the credits for the Flintstones, which I love the music for the Flintstones. And I misread it when I was a little kid and thought it was Hannah and Barbara. <laughs> so I thought, well, I could do that. If Hannah and Barbara can do it, so could I. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a really very nice miscommunication on my part. I had no idea that it wasn't something that women really were involved in, especially at that time. Right. So, uh, you know. I had some nice role models without even realizing I was completely wrong. <laughs> That's a really great story. <laughs> so <laughs> besides, uh, I guess, I mean, cartoons, it's a great way to get involved in music. I mean, those Hanna-Barbera cartoons and the Tex Avery, I mean, that music is so iconic. But growing up, what other kind of creative influences did you grow up with? Any other music or films that kind of really spoke to you as you kind of found your own voice? Oh, yeah, I loved all the Bond music. Oh, yeah. Uh, John Barry's music was uh, a huge influence. And, and the 60s music, even though I wasn't uh, you know, really around at that point, but I've always loved that 60s sound. So yeah. I guess that was a huge influence on me as well. And uh, and now, kind of, as your career grew, you started to uh, collaborate, you know, with a few notable composers. I mentioned John Powell earlier. Um, do you find that collaborating with other composers kind of uh, reinvigorates your creative process or adds to something that I guess wasn't there before? Oh, definitely. Working with John was a huge influence on me, um, just in, in many ways. I mean, he's such a iconic composer, and his music's so amazing. And just to be in the same room with him is is a thrill so yeah no definitely um i mean i like working on my own as well um that has its uh, delights but certainly when you're with some amazing film composers like he is it's uh, it's a big thrill and he got his uh, his witty humor as well so <laughs> yes yeah his brit humor <laughs> he doesn't have to say just kidding right. <laughs> i know he's kidding <laughs> that's funny yeah i talked to him sometimes I, i've talked to him before and he's like yeah some people don't know i'm kidding and i'm like i know but that's that's what i find funny so. <laughs> um but so you just scored i'd like to talk about your, your recent project bliss um for director uh, rita osei um what was the, the initial kind of conversations you had with rita about the film and what did the story need from you uh, musically well, she loves music and she you know, goes out of her way to make room for music in her films. And mm -hmm. it's unusual, you know, at the moment, because often music is, is really wanted, wanting to be so subtle, you can almost not realize it's there. And, um, you know, she was like, no, the music is really a massive part of the film. She was saying, you know, it's, it's probably a third you know, as, as important as the script and and the, the you know the the waves and the music and the and the waves of the actual visual you know the sea is quite an important part of the film. So she was finding all these elements, and she said definitely music is hugely important. So that was great. I mean, it's a composer's dream to have a director say that you know music is really important, right. and not you know we just want the music very quiet. We don't really want people to know that there's music, and and they mix it so low in the dub. Um, whereas this was quite the opposite. Um, the music's really loud in the dub, and uh, yeah, it's 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 a, it's a composer's dream for sure. Right. So when you approach uh, Bliss or any other film, I guess this could apply to anything. What's kind of the the first, I guess, first part of your process? Is it is it about finding a theme first? Do you find the tone, or do you kind of latch onto a character or something? Or what's kind of the first thing that gets the the music going? I guess that, to a certain extent, it's the, the palette. You kind of have a, you get a feel for the movie and, mm -hmm. and what's the general vibe of the palette of the film. Is it going to be, you know, synths and, 
you know, is it going to be tribal music? Is it, you know, what, what's the general palette? Does it have lots of brass? Does it have no brass? You know, what are the, the, the sounds, the tone, what's the tone of the movie? And then I try to find themes for the film using that tone um, and themes that can be used throughout the film, you know, for different characters. Um, it's always really fun to do. Um, so, you know, we did that a lot with um, Bliss. It was, you know, we had a theme for Charlie. Um, we had a theme for Tasha, um, who's the main, the girl who's, who the film's about. Um, and she sings this little refrain, um, which keeps coming back in the film. There's a lot of sort of magical realism in the film. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's kind of a combination of, of, I wouldn't say gritty realism, but uh, you know, very realistic you know, family drama. Um, but at the same time, she's, you know, she's a teenager and, and she goes off into this fantasy world now and again. And uh, when you, was it uh, any specific challenges that kind of popped up on Bliss or that required you know, kind of your creative intuition to kind of get around or was it a very kind of straightforward process? Um, well, you always try to think a little bit outside the box. Um, whether I succeeded, I don't know. Um, but definitely, you know, you, you try. It's a weird combination of, of doing things that are instinctively, you know, you know they're right. right. And other times trying to find a different way of doing the things that you know are right. Um, but, uh, you know, this, this film's quite challenging in, in the fact that it had so much music. Um, it was almost... I wouldn't say an animation type um, scenario, but it was it was definitely more like you know the amount of music you would write for an animation than it was the amount of music that you would write for a drama. Right. Um, but you know that's that's great. I mean, I love that aspect of it. Yeah, um, absolutely. You know, it's just you know work expands to fit the time available, and you get it all done somehow. I don't know how, but you do. <laughs> and when you're when you're trying to find, I guess, the emotional current of the story. Um, I've talked to you know I've talked to several composers and they uh, I guess I get some different diff, different an- answers. Uh, do you try to relate? I guess do you try to relate to the characters yourself in any fashion, or do you kind of uh, put on a, kind of almost like an actor? You'd be like, okay, I know how to write sad music, or do you try to kind of touch on some part of your life or your history? Like, okay, I I felt this way before. I I know how to evoke it musically. I guess you just have to be very empathetic. You know, you, you mm-hmm. have to, even if you don't have that experience, I mean, for example, this film, she's a girl who finds out that her father isn't her real father. So in effect, she's, she doesn't know who her father is. And that's, you know, she, she has quite a sort of sad childhood, um, which is nothing that I can relate to. Right. But at the same time, you know, one I can feel empathetic, even though I had a great childhood. I I almost feel... You know the sadness I feel for her is because I know what she's missing. Do you know right. what I mean? I, I I feel really empathetic with her and sad that she didn't have the life that I had. So, yeah, I think I think you have to do a bit of acting, you know, a bit of method acting, and draw on all the emotions that you've had in your own life. Right, absolutely, and uh, I think it also helps having. Of course, you had a great director with Rita, um, but on any kind of oh, yeah. with any film uh, as a composer. Uh, in terms of direction or guidance, kind of what do you expect from your director? I know some directors can be over controlling and, and some can be completely hands off, which can be, I guess, equally frustrating. But for you, are there any ideal qualities that you really kind of uh, were like, I love a director to have? Oh yeah, I mean Rita. If you if you had to have a, you know, what what's a great director? I mean she is. You know she's she gives you fantastic guidance. She's patient. You know, when you get to the end of a movie to do the music, uh, you know, they've been through the whole thing so many times. Sometimes they get to the music and they're like, oh, God, I've got to explain it all again. <laughs> Isn't it obvious what, by the film? And often it isn't obvious in the film because the subtlety that they want to bring across is something that the music actually can help portray. So if the music's not on there, which it isn't when you get it, then, you know, you miss out on, on some of the subtleties. And so then you, you need to make sure that you're understanding all the subtext and all the different layers in the film. So, you know, there's a lot of explaining or, or just, you know, conversations that they have to have with the composer. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, she's fun, fantastic because she uses all kinds of methods, you know, just going through what the character's, are thinking um, so that you have that to draw on. Um, and she uses adjectives. He's really good at 
giving you great describing words for the emotions. I mean, as much as possible, if they can give you any musical um, tones, like certain instruments they like, but on the whole, they don't. Um, and it's your job to try and you know, find instruments that, that you know, they connect to. And with Rita, it was definitely the orchestra and strings. Um, so, yeah, that was wonderful for me because any opportunity to work with an orchestra is, is a gift. You know, you love that. Right, and I'm taking all these notes down because I'm I'm not a musician. I'm coming from the other side. You know, I, I want to kind of write and direct, so I'm taking those notes down for now. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> uh, so, uh, kind of uh, fo- shifting focus a little bit. I know that you know uh, there's there was this big push, you know, for equal oppor- There is a big push for equal op- employment opportunities in the entertainment industry. Uh, there's a lot of focus on race uh, recently at the last Oscars. But I was wondering if you could speak on gender because I know or maybe share your experience of being a female composer in a field, you know, mostly dominated by, by men, kind of what are your views based off your experiences? And I guess, what do you tell young female composers who are trying to kind of get their foot in the door? Well, I, I, I think the story I told you at first is quite important, actually. Yeah, it is. You know, having a role model, <laughs> you know, a role model is something that's really helpful. And, um, you know, if they can identify with, you know, any female composers or any male composers, it doesn't really matter. You know, don't be put off by the fact that, you know, there aren't that many women doing it. It's just a matter of time and just a matter of, of having, you know, the guts to, to go out and do it. And there's nothing that could possibly stop a woman um, being a film composer as opposed to a guy. I mean, it's hard whether you're a guy or a girl. You know, it doesn't really matter. Right. Um, but it's, um, you've, got to, you've got to be determined to do it. Um, you know, and live and breathe it you know and it, and people say to me well, you've worked so hard and I say well it's not really it's not hard work if you love what you're doing Absolutely. you know it's I often find myself playing you know and thinking to myself oh, I'm playing a guitar or a piano or something and and in my head I suddenly go oh god I must go and do some work and stop messing about and then I realize oh I am working <laughs> <laughs> I just completely hadn't even realized that I was working I was so much fun <laughs> I thought I was continuing to mess about, you know? Right. So I think you can get yourself in that headspace where you, you just love what you do. It doesn't matter what it is. You'll, you'll excel at it just because you're enjoying investing those 10,000 hours that it takes to get good at anything. Well, those are that's those are really great words, yeah. <laughs> um, but to, to to wrap everything up, I always like to ask composers uh, this one question: uh, If you could score any film ever made, with no disrespect to the original composer and pretending the original score never existed, uh, what film would you choose? Oh, uh, it has to be a Bond theme, just because I love what he did, and and I'm if I could ever have you know have come up with the same thing. <laughs> oh God, I'm uh, just like. There's just so much in a Bond film, you know. You have every every emotion, you know, the the subtlety, the sadness, and on occasions, you know, there's always something awful happening, and especially um, some of them, you know, where that that I oh, forget the name of the one now, where the girl dies at the end. Oops, spoiler alert. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, um, uh, but you know, there's yeah. there's just so many emotions um, in in those films, you know, from action and suspense, and it's just quite all. Oh, I love it. All right, so which which Bond though? If you have to pick one Bond to score, Connery, Roger oh. Moore, Pierce Brosnan, oh, well, Dalton. Connery, of course, yeah, Connery. yeah. <laughs> All right, well, that's a perfect perfect choice. I think all the peers will agree with that. <laughs> well, Ellen, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate your uh, for speaking with me, and uh, it, was, it was very enlightening. So thank you. Well, thank you so much. I hope we get to talk again sometime. Absolutely. <laughs> 